Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Proud to Work in Cannabis podcast. Really excited today for a very timely event. I'm joined today by Jess Tyler, who's the Chief Revenue and Experience Officer at MJ Biz. I'm sure everybody listening knows about MJ Biz and is probably gone, or if you haven't gone, you're going this year to MJ Biz. It is the leading conference in the space. Um, it's how I got into the industry where I met my first customers back when the MJ Biz was at uh, the Rio back in uh, the old days. So anyway, it's been a, it's, it, I'm super excited to talk all about this. Jess, welcome to our podcast. How are you? Uh, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm uh, calling in here from uh, my house in, in Denver. We're, we're trying to get everything ready to, to head to Vegas in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, actually, before we, before we get into your background and how you joined MJ Biz and how MJ Biz has grown over the years, particularly the trade show side, we'd love to get a little preview for what people can expect for the upcoming MJ Biz 2023 edition. Oh, oh, I love talking about this. Um, you know, we have a team that's working around the clock right now trying to get everything ready. Uh, it's It's been a, you know, a roller coaster year in cannabis. And, um, you know, it's been a tougher year for, for some. And I think, you know, from our perspective, we're just gearing up to get everybody together to celebrate making it through the year, get ready for 24. Um, you know, everything's looking great in, in terms of uh, planning and registrations are rolling in every day. So um, we know that people are excited to be there. We're, we're, we are launching a few new things this year, um, as we do every year, just based on kind of where the industry is and, and what's really needed. So um, you'll definitely see some new things. Um, a couple of them I can just quickly highlight, which are... Um, Please. We have partnered with the Lexi Hotel, which is the uh, first consumption-friendly hotel in Las Vegas, which is super exciting. Mm. Um, we bought it out. We're, we're partnering with a number of different brands to do different um, activations and events there during the week. You can stay there and you can... Um, consume cannabis in, in your guest room there. So um, check that out. It's really exciting. Uh, we also have a partnership this year with Thrive Dispensary, where you're going to be able to do online ordering and meet with some of their brands. And then we're going to have their shuttle buses uh, running from the convention center to and from their Las Vegas strip location. So um, that'll that'll be new and um, offer kind of a, a little bit of a off off the the convention center drive experience this year. Um, additionally, there's a little bit of new content too uh, that's happening this year, including the um, Women in Leadership Forum, which is an all day deep dive. This one, you know, I've been asked for this for for a couple of years now, and we're glad that we can finally make it happen. Um, we just want to promote more diversity in the leadership level of the cannabis industry. And so um, we're doing that. And then two, kind of the same, um, uh, along the same lines, we're partnering with Black Cannabis Expo. Um, Christy Price, who heads that up, is a good friend of mine. And uh, she's putting together all of our social equity content, including uh, we're going to have Martin Luther King III that's going to be doing a, a town hall with us wow. on Wednesday. So, yeah, I mean, it's really exciting because um, just an, it's another step towards um, bringing more diversity and inclusion into the industry. That's a huge focus of ours this year that we, we just really want to support that. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a great event. So let's back up a little bit. We'd love to just talk a little bit about you. So you, it looks like, you know, uh, from what I understand, you've been working in event, the event space your entire life, and you were actually with Emerald, the company that ultimately bought MJ Biz before joining MJ Biz. So I'd love to hear how you transitioned from Emerald into MJ Biz and, and why you made that move. Yeah. So yeah, I have been in the events industry and, and working in media and publishing um, you know, my entire career. And I knew uh, the founders of MJ Biz for many years before I actually finally took the leap and joined. Um, and they, they brought me over in, in 2018. And, you know, I never really looked back after that point. It's been, um, gosh, working in the cannabis space is it's exciting. I think there's always something new to talk about. It's really pioneering a new space and getting to work with MJ Biz, which um, the way that we look at the company is just that it's um, we provide we're always working to provide both like the education side and the forums to connect for cannabis entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. So that can be done in a variety of ways. It's 
you know, our, our magazine, our newsletters, it's uh, obviously MJ BizCon and some of the other events we do during the year. Um, and that's just really rewarding. So it's it's been a lot of fun. Um, and then obviously in uh, coming out of um, the pandemic, um, January of 22, we made the decision to sell the business to um, Emerald, which is um, it's actually North America's largest trade show um, organizer. And uh, they have events. In, you went back to your roots. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I honestly, I didn't work for Emerald before. Um, I worked for another show company, but I've, I had known them for a long time. I knew the events they worked on and they have some of the some really big prominent events. Um that, uh, that people may have heard of, um, including in Vegas, they uh, also have ASD, that, that's twice a year, and then they own um, outdoor retailer. So the snow show, the summer show, um, that's Denver and Salt Lake. So those are, they have some really noteworthy events as well. Wow. Um, they're very professional at it. So it seemed like a really good home for us to take MJ Biz to the next level. So, um, and I'm just excited to be staying with the business and continuing to um, you know, further what we've been working on, you know, since 2012, when the first MJ Biz event happened, um, got a long way to go still. <laughs> and, and sorry about that. I was, I was looking at your LinkedIn and you have Emerald underneath, uh, MJ Biz and I didn't look at the time lapses. So it looked like you worked yeah. there before. So listeners, that was my, <laughs> that was, that was sloppy on my part. All good. Yeah, no. Okay. So since the acquisition has gone down, what have been the, the major changes that MJ Biz has gone through now that you have new ownership and you have such a huge backer in that you have the largest, you know, one, one, one of the largest players in the entire trade show industry uh, behind you? Yeah. You know, most of the changes, honestly, are internal things like systems and processes. Um, the, the thing is, is that Emerald acquired us because they really saw the value in this industry. Um, and what we're doing, you know, they're, they're acquiring and looking at things, you know, all the time. And we were their first cannabis, um, event that they came into. And it, it was a big deal also because Emerald is a, a public company. So, um, I think that says a lot for the industry that we have moved so, so far, um, ahead that, now a public company would be, you know, would be really interested in taking this business on and, and moving it forward because they see the value in it. And so we're really fortunate that we have, um, you know, a parent company that believes in what we do. They believe in this industry. Um, they love how MJ Biz is set up and how we have the news side as well. And, and so we're, we're getting a lot of support from our leadership there. Um, and just some more, ser you know, central services as well. So it's mostly internal, but just having that, um, that backing and that support, I think is really what's going to, you know, help us continue to take the entire cannabis industry to the next level. In terms of what you've seen this year for overall booths and exhibitors, I know a lot of cannabis businesses are going through hard times in 2023 and an area where they cut well, actually, I think there's two big areas where they cut. One is headcount and people. So we felt that, having being a staffing business. And the second is marketing. And so I have friends that are marketing agencies or PR agencies or events businesses, and they've felt the pain just in the sense of you may have less of a budget. I know even at Vangst, we were doing 10, 15 trade shows a year. We tried to pull it back. We're trying, you know, we were doing the... 20 by whatever big island booth where we're shipping the booth, then, you know, it really adds up. You have to store the booth. You have to ship the booth. I think just shipping our booth is 25 grand. Then the slot's 25 grand. Then you send the team out and, you know, a trade show can very well be a hundred grand. And so for us, we, we had to say, all right, how are we going to do more with less? And obviously this, you got to make some choices. So I was just curious how that's impacted just the overall appetite for exhibiting and if people are doing less with more or what you're seeing? Yeah. So, you know, there definitely are, um, I think, some some folks in the industry who are more challenged right now financially than others. Um, what we're seeing on the event side as a whole, though, is just uh, the feedback has been, I can't afford to not be there. You know, being at the end of the year, it's really a focus on 24. You know, yes, it's still in 23, but this is going to set you up for um, the business that you're going to do in 24. So um, we've been really fortunate that, you know, folks are staying with us and, and they see the value in being there because I think, 
you know, if there's if there's one place you're going to go during the year that you're going to invest in, you want to be where the majority of the industry is going to be. And, you know, we're really grateful that that happens to be Vegas for MJ BizCon. I know other events have, you know, the more niche events have had a little bit a harder time this year, just given the choices that have to be made. But um, right now, I mean, we're, we're looking to be, you know, right on par with uh, prior years. So, um, you know, knock on wood, glad to hear that. Glad to see that everybody's still coming. Um, it'll be interesting to see kind of what the, what the mood is on site, given, you know, all of the, the challenges this year. But I know that the folks that I've talked to, they're just excited um, because it means more opportunity next year and that we'll start to see things improve. It would be great if at the conference they made the rescheduling announcement, which very well could be around that timing because supposedly we are going to hear within 90 days, which MJ Biz would be right around um, 90, 90 days. I mean, I went to Ben Singa and a couple others and the mood was much more positive just because, uh, well, at, at Ben Singa, uh, Safer had made it through the banking committee. Obviously, since that time with the new Speaker of the House, it seems potentially less likely, but it's it's pretty crazy how just like a news announcement can totally change the mood or vibe of the conference. So it could be great if we all get there and um, the rescheduling announcement happens. I wanted to talk a little bit about best strategies for people going to MJ Biz wanting to make the most. To your point, a lot of people can't afford not to go. I mean, frankly, that's how we've thought about it. We've exhibited every year at MJ Biz and continue to, and we have ditched other events so that we can still go to MJ Biz, send 20 people and really go big. Um, what are some strategies that people that are investing in a booth, investing in travel for their team, what can they do to make the most out of their experience at MJ Biz and walk away setting themselves up for a big 2024? I think it comes down to planning. You know, it's uh, like 30,000 people and um, it ends up being you know, around a million square feet that you have to cover um, in in three or four days, right? So um, the best advice I always give to people is don't wait till you show up to, to try to figure it out. Go in and do some planning in advance. Um, we've set up a lot of tools to help make that easier, including um, both on our, our website as well as it's uh, in the mobile app. You're able to go in and like, if you're doing content, plan your sessions, plan your journey while you're there. Um, where you're going to be and when, go through the exhibitor list, um, figure out who you need to meet with. Um, and actually, and brand new for this year, we, we invested in some new technology to with our mobile app where it's going to do some uh, use AI to recommend other people who have similar interests or things that you probably should look at based on the information that you give it of why you're attending. So um, hopefully the, like our goal is to cut it down. That's the one thing I hear a lot is like, gosh, Jess, like the, the, the show is so big and I can't get through it in, in three days. <laughs> so, and, and believe me, I get it. Um, you know, you have to wear your comfortable shoes and, you know, I always joke that I need some rollerblades to get around the show um, <laughs> throughout the week, but um, going in and like setting up those appointments in advance, I can't recommend that enough and just figuring it out because it is a whirlwind. Um, and then, you know, long days followed by longer nights and which, you know, is part of the fun, right? But, uh, but it does, you know, require a plan and require a lot of work. Yeah. We always tell our team, like, this is not a vacation. Do not come to this if you are not planning on being legitimately exhausted by Friday at 5 p.m. And, you know, we're there for, gosh, 72 hours. And it's your job to have as many meaningful conversations with as many people as possible, which means starting at 7 a.m. and ending at 1 a.m. Um, you, What are some mistakes that you've seen people make outside of not planning in coming to MJ Biz where they've come to you and they said, man, we did this, but next year we're going to do something else because, you know, we epically failed and didn't receive any ROI. I mean, I can think of a bazillion that we've made, but curious from your perspective, what are the, some of the rookie mistakes people make going to MJ Biz besides not planning? All right. So the big one, and I'm saying this, I, I know I'm a little biased, but I, I do truly mean this. Um, coming to Vegas and not uh, coming to the convention center or coming to the actual show. So um, when you say like, hey, I'm just going to come in and go to the parties, I think you're um, at that point just 
rolling the dice to say, you know, I hope I meet the right people and I hope, you know, the right people show up and that, that are there. But um, if you actually come to the convention center, that is where uh, the decision makers are. That is where the, um, you know, all of the major events are happening. So um, making that trip and making that part of your investment, I think, is really key um, for the business side. Um, if you're really serious about doing business in this space, that is where you need to be. So um, I've definitely heard that. And I always say like, well, you didn't run into that person because you were, you know, you were leaving it up to chance, right? Or not having a booth. I mean, you're, I'm, yeah. I've ha- I'm happy because a lot of our competitors don't have a booth and they're just saying they're sending their team. And it's like, sucks for you because there's going to be thousands of people that walk right up. It's literally, it's literally like you're like fishing and fish swim to you at your booth. Yeah, exactly. And well, and, you know, MJ Biz does a, we do a lot of marketing for our exhibitors as well. Uh, you know, we go through the effort of making sure that people know you're there um, because we want you to have a successful show. So if you are just showing up and walking around the floor and, you know, trying to do business that way, it is definitely harder because you're trying to find people versus having us funnel them to you. Um, so I think that's a great point. Um you know, otherwise, I think the shoes are key. Um, you're on your feet all day long. That one, it's a simple one and, and hydrating. It is it is the desert. So those, those little things, I think, matter. Um, and then just, you know, this is my trade show advice just for anybody. Don't go too hard on the first night. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I think you know, make sure you have a plan and, and really look at it in terms of, you know, how are you going to do the most business. It's yes, it can be fun. And, you know, I hope everybody has fun. I want to have fun while I'm there. Um, But making sure that you're taking those necessary steps to drive business to either if you have a booth, you know, your exhibit, or if you're, you know, an attendee side, then making sure that you're setting up the appointments with the exhibitors that are on the floor. Yeah. I always say like, don't, don't drink. I mean, like, that's the thing. Like, I don't, I know some people can't have fun without drinking, but drinking kind of really squashes you for the next day. So if you're going to drink, maybe wait to drink until Thursday night. Um, And it's also embarrassing. I mean, I would say, look, when I started Vangst, I was 22 and I hired a bunch of other 22-year-olds. You know, obviously it's been like eight or nine years, so I'm I'm old now. But in the beginning, we used to go there like 10, 22-year-olds and just get blasted. And I'm like, (laughs) looking back on it, I'm shocked anyone ever signed up to work with us Um, because they would probably see us at these parties like, what are these – bozos doing and so over the years we've really said okay let's let's be at least a couple drinks behind the people that we're prospecting to be our customers um because I, I you can i would say i have seen some people just being like sloppy and embarrassing and that's your reputation within the industry and so it's really important i think to to put on a um a good face in terms of actually standing at the booth um do you have any do you have any um advice for exhibitors things that they can do while they're at their booth, whether it's bringing the right marketing collateral, having a demo of their product, um, you know, how they approach potential people coming in. Do you have any like actual exhibitor advice for people to get the most value out of the show? Yeah. Um, I think there's nothing worse than when you, so if you're an attendee and you're walking down the aisle and to, to a booth that you're interested in. And if you see the, the sales team, you know, sitting behind a table, you know, on their phones, looking down, um, that's not inviting, right? So um, you want to be able to um, greet people, be engaged. Um, and then obviously, like, don't leave your booth unattended. Um, if you have to leave for, for lunch or things like that, just do it in shifts because you never know when that one customer that you're going to need is, is going to come up. And it's a bad look for your company if you're, you know, either you have a sales team that's not engaged or, you know, not present. Um, additionally, uh, I am a huge fan of QR codes for collateral and following up. Um, so if you can get something for them to scan right away, then, then they, they, they'll have your information. They won't lose it on the plane or, you know, it, not take it back. Um, I think that's always really good. And then finally, um, there is nothing more important, I think, than um, timely follow up. So if you have that great conversation with someone, um, get get an email out to them that night, get it out the next day. I think there's so many conversations that are happening during that week that you don't want to be lost in, in the mix. And the longer you wait to follow up, the more it becomes the, gosh, what do we talk about? Who is, who is that? You know, 
um, you, you want to be front and center. So um, timely follow up with those leads. I, I can't tell you how many times over the, the years where I've heard like, oh, well, we have, um, you know, we got the leads, but then, you know, well, they didn't, not all of them converted. Okay, well, how many did you talk to? When when did you talk to them? And you can start to see some of that sales pattern um, in the follow up that really, if it falls off, it's, it's going to be a lot harder um, to eventually make that sale. Couldn't agree with that more. Following up, getting on the phone, making your investment worth it. It's one thing to go, but then I'd say even the real work starts when you come home. So it's great because this year it's not you know, a lot of times back in the day, we used to go and then go from there to Thanksgiving and then you kind of forget. So now it's like you, you have time before um, true holiday break to, to go and close deals. So Jess, if I know we're coming up on time here, if anybody uh, has not registered for MJ Biz and wants to go, how do people sign up? Is it too late to sign up? And any final closing thoughts on why everybody in cannabis should come to this year's 2023 MJ Biz? Uh, definitely still time to sign up. We are going to have registration open all the way through the event, but, um, don't stand in line, um, uh, on site, just do it online. Uh, cause you'll be able to pick up your badge a whole lot faster. So if you go to mjbizcon.com, um, you can sign up right there. We will leave it open online, uh, all the way through the show so that even if you're, you know, coming in on Wednesday morning, just do it on your phone real fast. And then, um, it'll make your pickup time so much faster. Um, that's a tip I have always for, especially first timers. Um, don't wait till you get there. Um, and you know, this year, I think there's a lot that's on the horizon for the cannabis industry. You know, you mentioned rescheduling is in, you know, the near future. We do have um, one of the top U.S. Uh, cannabis policy advisors, Norman Bierenbaum, who's going to be speaking about what does rescheduling mean. Um, so between that, safer banking, you know, there it's we have a lot of momentum right now, I think, in the industry more than we've had probably in a little while. So um, this is this is definitely the time you can't miss it out this year. Absolutely. Well, Jess, I'm excited to see you at MJ Biz. Just a couple weeks, we'll get through Thanksgiving and we'll all come to Vegas and walk off the turkey. Oh, love it. Because you will get a lot of steps at MJ Biz. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing you there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jess, and hope to see everybody at MJ Biz. Thank you. <laughs>